for a jockey, it can be very lonely, a very lonely sport. You have to deal with defeat on a regular basis, like the great Sir Anthony McCoy Road, more winners than anyone else, 4,000, 800 and whatever. But on the flip side of that kind, that means you rode about 15,000 losers. So a jockey has to deal with defeat all the time. There's seven, eight races every day. There's only seven or eight winners. That's a lot of disappointed people. So you're having to, having to deal with defeat. You're hungry. You're tired from traveling. And it's just snowballs. Eventually, it'll, it'll get to you, and you doubt yourself. And as I say, it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. You go through loss of form, you go through injury, you're going to have certain depressive symptoms. That's pretty normal. The thing is to try and limit the effect of those so that they only will last for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, hopefully, and we get the jockeys to move on. Everybody at some stage will have a dark day. So it's what that person wants to do or feels the need to. Like, AP could obviously cope with it himself. Um, but there's other people, like me, I felt I needed help. I couldn't cope with it myself, hence why I asked. What clues might a jockey have in their own mind that they, they need to go and find someone to, to support them through? It's a simple list, but it's, it's highly true. Your mood will swing from good to bad. You'll become irritable. You might not sleep so well. You could be very fractious and grumpy with people you're normally very close to. You start behaving, doing irrational things you don't normally do. And you'll start disliking or even hating the thing you enjoy most, which actually which is being a jockey in the first place. Once you spot those simple signs, don't wait for it to get worse. Seek people who will help you through that process. It's not a weakness, it's not, it's not, there's nothing wrong with you, it's actually quite normal. You don't wait for your car to break down before you take it to the garage. If you've got a, a nice BMW, you service it regularly. You look after it so that it can ferry you your 70,000 miles a year. We're no different. I think from doing the degree I've done, people don't actually understand what psychology is. I think a lot of people do go through periods where they, they might doubt themselves a bit, especially in a sport as, as fickle as racing. It is really difficult to maintain full confidence in yourself at all times. If you ask for help, the Jocks Association, Paul, he can put you in touch with counsellors. There's an awful lot more good people in the world than bad people. Don't be afraid. The, the support for jockeys for mental health, well-being issues comes in many forms. So you have the sports psychologists at the rehabilitation centres and we have our own performance expert in Aidan Conlon. We also run a 24-hour confidential counselling helpline and support network. People just assume that all counselling is the same. There's so many different ways that they could be helped. I suppose the services that I offer, the first thing is just literally listening. So you're given the, the jockey the opportunity to open up if it's professional or personal relationship with your trainer, your current form. There's so many things that could be hindering you from performing at a higher level. For every question that we have, whether it's in a personal lives or professional lives, we already kind of know the answer. I'm not going to solve all issues but it's sort of a segue to different professionals or offering a different perspective on something that they mightn't have thought of before. Apprentices are likely to be affected by mental health. There is absolutely no shame in, in reaching out if you are struggling. I rang Egan up one day and I, I said to him, you know, I'm just I'm struggling when we're riding here and it's, it's not physical, it's all mental. And we had a chat, I think we were chatting for about an hour. He's, and he managed to put my mind at ease and he said a couple of things which which really made a big difference to me. I found personally that a sports psychologist is definitely a big help, just to, to help you realise things that you may not have realised and to help put thoughts in your head that are going to help you progress. I think having people like Egg on there, who's been there and done it as a jockey and he knows how difficult it is, and has on top of that now the education with psychology to go with it, I think he's, it's going to be a huge benefit. My self-worth was determined by what happened on a race course. And that's crazy, because all it is is horses running around the field. Your self-worth should be determined by what kind of a person you are, what sort of a father I am to my children, what sort of a husband I am to my wife. That's what determines your self-worth, not by what happens out there. You put so much 
of life in perspective. And if I get beaten one that I feel I should have won on, it, it hurts bad, but for 10 minutes, whereas before you just hold on to it and all you're holding on to is the negatives. Human beings make mistakes. I think sports psychology is, is a little bit more mainstream now. The younger generation seem a little bit more open to, well, who can help me? Who can, who can get me on that level? And that's ultimately what we're trying to do. We're trying to make everyone as successful as they can be. And if there, there are issues that you're having, emotionally or mentally, that are affecting your performance and, and affecting effectively how happy you are, they will have an effect on how you perform as a jockey. And in the same way that you wouldn't hesitate to have an operation on your shoulder to get it fixed, you shouldn't hesitate to get help to get your head right as well. And more and more are doing it.